<laughs> All right, uh, go ahead and uh, looks like it's right on the money, so thanks for coming. I'm um, going to talk about a little bit, uh, a little bit about uh, intro biohacking for those that haven't met me. Um, I'm one of the villages in the village room, and I've been implanting people that have been willing. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, um, one project I've been working on since about December. And it, I made the famous last words of, sure, I can do it. It'll, I can build it in like a couple weeks. An engineer, weeks means months, and months means years. Pretty sure like a couple weeks into it, I was like, yeah, it might just take a couple months to finish this. Famous last words. So anyway, if you don't already know what biohacking means, it's basically uh, not that. But yes, I am coordinated. As you have noticed, I am very graceful. And sorry about that. I'm just glad nobody was sitting behind me. One, the view's not very good. Two, I'd throw a chair at you. So you know, it, I would change it instead of do-it-yourself biology. It's more like do-it-yourself evolution, because biology happens whether you like it or not, but evolution's not very fast. So why not add, add what you can with today's technology to make your life more convenient and you know more secure? Um, cyborg, that was just a made-up term for science fiction back in the day. Funny part is there's an argument going on this weekend about what a cyborg truly is, even though uh, it was invented back in the 60s, which I think is hilarious because that's what Wikipedia told me. I was like, well, it must be true. It's on the internet, right? <laughs> and Grinder, well, you know, it's not the dating app. If you want to know more about that, that's a totally different talk, not this one. Uh, Grinder is more like the do-it-yourself guys that, instead of, you know, like a body hacker that would be like, let's talk about dieting and nootropics. Instead, so they're like, hey, do you want to put a cell phone in your body? How about like a solar panel to power that cell phone? Just the craziest stuff with off-the-shelf technology, what have you. Or they make it from scratch based on off-the-shelf technology. Now, talking about implants often makes people think of penetration testing. And yes, um, this is a design not by me, but by El Cantero, a good friend of mine from Japan. And yeah, if you're wanting to know more about those kind of implants, I'm sorry again, this is a wrong talk. And also, if you want a good humor, I'm sorry, this is the bad humor because it's free. You didn't pay for the humor. <laughs> Just like if you come by and get an implant, I will crack jokes all day long trying to calm you down, trying to keep you from passing out and puking on me because needles are so much just like Christmas. So much better just to give than receive. Because, you know, I've got five implants of my own, including a couple prototypes that I've been waiting for six months or a year to put in. I'm not very good at letting people putting things in me. Because, you know, when you do it all day long and you're the one that does it the most, it's really hard to find somebody that you're willing to trust to put it in you. I'm sure a, a professional piercer we have here would agree. It takes a lot of trust and a leap of faith to get it in. So now these are some of the implants I, I will talk about and will put in you if you so desire. They're not that big. Well, at least this one isn't. It's about the just a little bit bigger than a grain of rice. But, you know, it could be penetration testing, depending on who you talk to instead of red teaming. But there is some red involved, just, you know, not as much as you want or maybe just enough. Now, who's on my team that helps make this implantable computer? Well, I'm the idiot that said, sure, I can build it. Um, buddy of mine by the name of, that goes by the handle of Cassox, he is a very gifted individual and registered nurse in his day job. Um, he's the one that's actually developed the two coatings that are going on this. He's been testing him for you know several years using magnets, including the world's largest implanted magnet that Anastasia Sen who's a you know cyborg magician and the host for the device. She's a, like an old school magician that also does a freak show type of stuff. 
So you know, think of large, sharp objects going through you, which means she's got a great, better pain tolerance than I will ever have. So yes, she has a hockey puck that's a magnet in the side in her forearm. So yeah, biggest magnet in the world. I will never go that big. I don't need that much. So what was the challenge she put up to me? Let's, you know, create a proof of concept, you know, something quick, just using whatever I can get on the internet or at Fry's, Best Buy, where, you know, wish there was still Radio Shack instead of I have to go to Hobby Town. It's supposedly got the Radio Shack inside it. So not a Radio Shack. It's a, it's a lie. Do not believe it. It's kind of like cake in some games I've been told. But anyway, it's, what's, what's the eventual goal? To create something just to prove you that any idiot, including this one, can make something that's functional and viable that can be implanted and used. And what's the meaning of it? That means any of you jerks can go home make something, implant it in somebody, and it'd be useful as well. Possibly with this, once it goes open source and is on the web, you can take it and prove it and show me where I screwed up. If you do, please let me know, because maybe we can work on the second phase. Because right now there's a whole lot of parts that we're trying to put on one single board later. So when you're thinking about putting some, something in your friends, what's the possible dangers? You know, are, have we had anybody you know, go Evil Dead on us this weekend? I haven't heard anything. Have you gotten Evil Dead yet? Not, Not yet. You just got implanted, though. Maybe 15 minutes ago. Still got time. If you do, we might need an old priest and a young priest. A couple books and some water. If not, you know, maybe maybe some rabbis. I'm not sure. Who knows? But yeah, possible dangers are not quite as fun as science fiction, but definitely stretching of the skin, leaving to stretch marks in fun places uh, on people you would never expect. Because the top one there is um, something called the Cicadia. It's a biosensor platform that came out in 2012, six years ago, and bigger than my Razor 1. That's kind of scary to have in your forearm, but it it was a proof of concept. They even did inductive charging, and the battery did swell, but it did not go all Note 7 on them, thank God, because it's a good friend of mine. And very nice guy. I'd rather him still have uh, that arm. And with magnets, if any of you have gotten the glass magnets that we have that, um, debuted for the first time at this conference, then you're not having as much risk as, say, coated magnets. The coating on a lot of magnets are, is fragile and thin. Now, whether it be by handling, shipping, or just implantation in the body, just attacking and breaking it down, once that magnet itself is then attacked past the coating, you're, you're basically looking at heavy metal poisoning if you don't get it out and get everything cleaned out quickly, as well as necrosis of, uh, of the tissue, what have you, because, of course, heavy metal is going to break it down, poison it. And you're looking at gangrene, what have you. Not not a fun time. It's not exactly what I would like to do on the weekends. And as well, if you don't do it, and you know, sterile sandwich, because when grinding first came out, some of the people that were first involved would do this stuff in their kitchen with steak knives, because that's all they had that was sharp enough, vodka for sterilization. And then like sugar coated magnets, because well, you know, the fancy coated magnets can be pretty pricey. And sugar is cheap. Pick it up at Target, five bucks for a big pack of it. And the magnets uncoated, they're you know you get like a thousand of them for like five bucks on you know, Amazon. You get two day shipping free, more one for world. But when it comes down to it, you just got to be a little bit more careful about what you're doing. You know, you probably wonder, what do I have in me? I don't have any magnets yet. I do want to get a glass encapsulated one. Um, I've got uh, two implants in my left hand. Uh, got an NFC, which is uh, my front door key. And also, if you happen to scan it, it will rickroll you. So I'll know very quickly that if you're trying to get my UID for my front door by going, really? <laughs> Are you ever going to give me up? 
are you ever going to let me down? Because I think you just let me down. And then also there's an RFID chip, which is an HID mode, and it's a HID badge. The fun thing is I keep a backup of it, because sometimes I wipe it and reload it with a different UID uh, for if I get contracted for a pen test. Because the funny story about that is, if you get caught while walking into a building under contract, of course, because I don't look good in orange, especially orange jumpsuits, uh, they can catch you, make you open, empty out your pockets, what have you, and if you don't have a badge, how'd you get in the door? I was wide open, man. I'm just looking for the bathroom. Then you can walk, you know, they'll kick you out, of course. You come right back in. Same door, different door. Until the security guard gets a little bit confused. But the fun part is, the backup of the original UID that I have on there, it's still active on the place I haven't worked at in three years. So every time I go back and visit, scan myself in and just be like, hi guys. And of course, my old supervisor, who's a friend, just kind of hangs his head and is like, I think we need a new system admin because he's never going to turn it off. But anyway, I also have two more in my left hand. I mean, my right hand. I do know my left from my right, right? Got a great cheat note in front of me. Uh, I got an RFID, uh, which is uh, an EM mode, which is also my motorcycle key and also a key to a uh, small hacker space in San Antonio called Can Opener Labs. And uh, also, and as well as another XNT, which is NFC. Uh, that I use as a digital business card. And, uh, unfortunately, I used to have another one in my uh, left left hand that was in the, my middle finger. It was an NFC one that I used to use as a digital business card before this one because, well, everybody loves job hunting, right? You just love recruiters that don't read your resume. Just do a keyword search and then talk to you about positions you have no idea, no reason for to ever talk to you about. Well, I figured if you want my contact details, Go ahead, scan it. Please. And if you laugh, then you have a sense of humor. I would like to talk to you more. If you're intrigued by how that happened, and I wiggle the chip inside, and you don't cringe and run away, then yeah, let's talk about that position you had. If you don't laugh, then it's like, okay, you're boring. We might be able to work with this with some professional training. But if you cringe and run away from technology, then... I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know anyone that can. But, so further about the challenge, it was, uh, she wanted something simple that would scan like NFC. Um, I have a toy that is open source from Bishop Fox called the RF Tastic Thief. It's the size of a messenger bag. And I was at the time trying to make it smaller so I could fit it as like almost like a gauntlet underneath my hoodie. So I had a Raspberry Pi 3. NFC hat on it, what have you. It was like, you know, about yay big, about that thick. And I, even though she's not a small lady, I didn't want to say, yeah, let me put this giant thing in your thigh. Because one thing, as a married man, you should know, never comment on the size of a lady's thigh. If you do, run, keep running. And two, it's just, I don't want, desperately didn't want to put anything that huge in a person. So it's like, oh God, what do we, what do we do? But to get me interested, it's like, this has already been done. There's already a thing out there. Yeah, I'm making one for my arm. It's just so I can, don't have to carry a bag when I do a pen test. Why not add, say, Wi-Fi sniffing and Bluetooth sniffing along the way so I can possibly run Kismet from somebody inside somebody's body and pick up SSDs, um, wherever they happen to be walking that day. Just seemed kind of fun. It's like, so what's a good platform? I already was working with a Raspberry Pi 3, but it's kind of big. It's kind of thick. Then I, I switched to an A and also, you know, kind of thought about it. It's like, there's definitely a smaller footprint. So any idiot can pick up a Raspberry Pi cheap and put it in somebody, right? Why? Because, well, there's lots of hats available for this thing. You can easily get a you know, Lith Pro um, hat on there, you know, different NFC sniffers, what have you. Plus, they got, you know, great ways to add all sorts of dongles on there, too. But thinking about all those parts on this little bitty device just made me wonder how much can I fit in that pocket. Uh, and, yeah, Swiss Army knife. It's unbelievably every attachment you could possibly think of. 
just led me to think, how stupid am I being now? If I can overthink something, if I can over-engineer something, I usually end up doing it for at least a couple times before somebody says it's not going to fit. It's not going to work. But, yeah, as far as slides go, it's just, this is what I'm, I'm running out of and just continuing the conversation because it's been, it's been an interesting road. I'm actually finally about to send it off to be coded. Uh, the biggest problem I've run into before you know, with trying to attach every little thing to it is also let's add an RFID sniffer. Let's add this. Let's add that. Let's actually get it done became the thing. And let's stop exploding the unit. Because uh, thermal runaway, just like a Note 7, is very easy. Overcharging a unit and causing it to explode is fairly easy. Um, how many pies have I destroyed? Too many. I'm not going to go into the full number because it's kind of embarrassing. And especially, I don't want it on record because my wife doesn't know how many I've killed <laughs> and probably wouldn't be happy. Even though she often laughs at um, what I've done next. Because, well, if, if you're not in a relationship that you can laugh at yourself and the other person that's having fun, what are you doing wrong, man? It's like, isn't that part of life? But um, this uh, this project is just getting nuts. So we're, we ended up having to uh, strip it down. I had to talk to my other teammates and just be like, all right, I know you're. this is all my part of it. You all have got the other part. Well, all she has to do is carry it and not die. Um, the other team member, he's he's got to code it twice, two separate codings, which I won't go into because that's the real product. That's why we're making the actual electronics part open source, because <clears throat> that way any of y'all can take it, run with it, build it better. But if you want to code it, come on over. We'll be glad to help you for a small fee. And any other project uh, projects you might be doing, we'd be glad to help you code it, because we've already proved from little bitty disc magnets for fingertips for and giant hockey puck. For three years now, uh, it's viable and not leaching heavy metals, you know, doing chem on, on the liver, what have you. So we got the coating. What you don't have is quite yet fully, as far as I know, is uh, inductive charging working quite perfectly. We're going to make sure for sure to see if uh, I'll finally might have not been blowing it up or overcharging it once it's coated. So far, I've been able to charge it a few times, and it's now time to actually code it and hopefully not waste the coding. If the one that I'm sending off next week actually gets coded and doesn't fail, then I can send the other four uh, prototypes to get coded as well. And then we'll talk about um, putting them in people, because we already have several volunteers, which the only thing I'm asking for is access. It's like. Uh, that way I can remote into them and then fire up whatever software runs on Linux and try different fun things like Kismet, Wireshark. And the fun part about that is it's like you, you kind of wonder, what's the range on this? How do you test that? So while I tried with neoprene, like, you know, cutting up a wetsuit, uh, filleted steak, tried fish, tried different things just to See, is there a difference between types of materials? You know, I know somebody, I don't know anybody's skin that's as dense and rubbery as uh, neoprene. Some can be a little bit stretchy, but not like that. But steak seems to be a good uh, good choice. Plus, you get to cook it afterwards and eat it. You know, as a Texan, I've been told many times that, you know, being vegetarian is illegal there. So, you know, beef is just easily accessible and easily usable as a way of judging uh, signal penetration. And it works pretty decent. It's not nearly as effective as I would hope, but I also can't have an antenna going up, down somebody's leg through the knee. Not yet, anyway, maybe later. That's that's probably a, another um, whole other uh, challenge to try and figure out. It's how do I sit there and make like a PCB and have coil of Wi-Fi antenna and they're just to get a better signal. Uh, maybe that might be one of y'all's ideas, how to fix that problem for me. If you can, I would love it. You can easily find me on Twitter or what have you. 
If you're crazy enough to have an idea for that, I, I would love it because it's not nearly as great as, um, you know, working from a laptop. What do you expect? You're remote, remoting in a human body and then trying to sniff what's around you. Um, but, you know, when it comes down to it, I'm kind of, you know, at, at to a point where with the project it's about ready to be published and I'm ready to see what y'all can do with it, with just the first, first phase. Second phase is to take whatever we've learned along the way, all the parts, since most of it is open source hardware, and then throw it on one board. So it'll be so much easier to, to coat, so much easier to, um, put together, but I've also found, thankfully, in San Antonio, a guy that can take my PCB and make it smaller. Because, uh, his last project, he was, uh, making PCBs for smartwatches. So, with a little luck and a lot of beer, I'm hoping that we can take it and make it like a fourth of the size that it is now. Um, we've, I've got a basic PCB that's like a freaking, um, uh, five by seven, which is not small enough. But, what do you expect? I'm not an electrical engineer. I haven't done electronics in about 20 years. And back then, that was high school. So, if, if I can do it, maybe y'all can. That's the whole reason I did this talk is basically say, if you're not doing it, you want to do it, you don't see something that's in the market, please try. And if, by all means, if you have any ideas, lend them. Because, uh, um, a couple times I was almost stumped, but I got lucky. Um, read switches, which is, uh, just, uh, like a wire, um, to be able to power on and off the device. Uh, those often fail. And it's best I found to power it off to do recharging. But, um, back at Body Hacks in January, I met a guy that was in the audience that said, why don't you use, uh, hall sensors? It's a solid state magnetic switch. I was like, really? I didn't know that existed. Tried it. Desoldered the, what a read switch that I already added to replace just toggle switch because toggle switch in a coded device is worthless anyway. And that was like one of the first things I noticed is leaving it on and trying to charge it inductively ended up really bad. It's when a runaway just happened pretty within the first test, but that solid state switch works much better um, than, uh, than the read switch. Read switch failed half the time, wouldn't turn on, wouldn't turn off. And so it's, you know, the main problem was just trying to find the right off the shelf part without building it uh, with a safety circuit in, in the um, inductive coil so it won't overcharge. But I happened to get lucky and found one off of a uh, old cell phone parts website and it works fine. Hopefully I can then uh, get a buddy of mine to help me replicate that onto the onto the board because I still don't know exactly how that uh, works and why it doesn't burn, but it's working, so that makes me happy. Anybody got any questions? With my current implants, no, my current implants not at all. Magnets, I. I don't have yet, so I don't know since most um, body scanners or uh, most wands, what have you, work magnetically. This, once this is actually in a person, I would think that would probably be a pretty pretty big issue because you'll want to kind of wonder uh, at that point, how would TSA react? Especially since you couldn't fly with a Note 7, how would you be able to fly with a computer in your thigh? And that was kind of a problem I brought up to um, Anastasia, when she was planning on getting it implanted and then flying to London for, uh, international magician, magicians conference and then showing it off. And at that point, by doing, uh, stupid people tricks where she has uh, a deck of cards that with NFC tags, basically, uh, marking all the cards and she could slap her thigh and then relay the information to her phone through Wi-Fi and then through Bluetooth to implanted headphones and be like, this is your card. Like Ace of Spades, this is, this is, and even though, yeah, that's fun and simple and easy, right off the bat, that's why I was like, I need to add Bluetooth, I need to add Wi-Fi. 
but also I was just like, how are you going to get through airport security? How are you going to get through customs? It sounds like a very bad idea in the end, but some bad ideas are just fun, and you can't help but do them. Anybody else? That is a special secret sauce. It's, I can tell you it's not gravy. Because everything in Texas that's covered in gravy, we'd probably eat. I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. I used to be a firefighter, so sirens make me deaf. That actually, I was curious about if, uh, you know, basically looping around similar to like a inductive coil on a board, if that was a possibility. Since you've given me an actual technical term, I can Google. I know what I'm doing later. I might have to find you again or you find me on Twitter and twi tweet that to me. So I'd be like, oh, okay, that's what he actually said. Cause probably five minutes from now, I'll be like, what, what he say? <laughs> It's, he, I know he said something that sounded really cool. I did, I bugged the guy from Body Hacks at least five, ten times before I was like, oh, hall sensor. Cause I kept thinking hall button, um, or butt sensor or something else. It just wasn't making sense to me. It's like, what's a hall sensor? Is it, does it sense a hall? How is that a solid state that works with a magnet? That doesn't make sense to me. Until I actually Googled it on, and then, of course, should have gone to Adafruit in the first place. Idiot. Like I said, if I can do something fun with off-the-shelf parts, so one of you guys could. Because I know I'm not the smartest guy in the room. That's why I know I'm in the right room. Anybody else? Come on. There's some more things that you can solve, I'm sure. Especially once it gets posted. Well, it, so how are you going to be posting it? Are you going to be putting it on like, GitHub with information that people can fork, or what is, what's your plan for that? There's already some elements of it on GitHub. I'm going to put a page on a, an actual page just to it, but I'll link it on my Dangerous Minds web uh, podcast website. As well as a couple other, um, website, I'll send the link to if they want to post it, but tie it all together and be like, uh, it'd be like basically, here's the, here's the board design right here, uh, and then put it over on Medium, put the software on GitHub, link to the other software that a buddy of mine, uh, wrote that's already open source. And I asked permission if he would have a problem if I put it in some, somebody's body. And he's like, um, excuse me. He's like, what are you doing and why is it going in somebody? And I explained it and he's like, say it again? I, I don't understand. But, you know, he eventually was like, okay, cool, but I don't want it. I can't even get him to get like an RFID or an NFC implant. When I told him I was putting it fully in, somebody was just like, yeah, can I, can I remote in and play with it? But I don't want it. I said, only if I'm there. Then we can work on it together and maybe run, improve your code. It's kind of crap, but I still can't code that well. So, yeah. And he, he made the joke of, yes, I know I'm a crappy coder, but maybe we can find somebody smarter. Um, has there been any, you know, our body is, we don't really notice it constantly. Like, you trip and fall down the stairs. Have you ever had one of these, like, great? Like just get around. Like one of these regular implants that are like basically a glass capsule? Uh, well, as far as like the these the regular implants I do normally um back. Let me think for a moment. Huh? It's like uh it's probably around oh seven they were doing uh basic testing before they brought the product to market. The original NFC and RFID implants. For the fun of it, they had access to, you know, hydraulic press at a college up in, uh, um, Washington State and then put 
one of the chips in a chicken they got from a local grocery store, put it in the hydraulic press, and basically made the chicken spreadable, and then then cleaned it out and found the chip, put it under a microscope after they cleaned it off just so it can actually see something. It was perfectly fine. The chicken didn't survive, but its sacrifice let us know that your hand won't survive in some of the worst instances. But the great thing is, if you find the chip, you can clean it off and put it in the stump that's left. <laughs> so at least, you know, worst comes to worst. Your hand won't be salvageable. You'll need to get amputated. But the stump, you, you can still get your chip and have your front door key and have a hook there so you can be like, yeah. <laughs> like I said, the humor is bad, but it's free. Eh. It's also a self-defense uh, mechanism. I don't like being in front of people. Anybody else got, got some questions? How do you get rid of it? Yeah. Well, uh, that's the huge difference between animal implants and people implants. The animal implants, uh, like the original dog ones, what have you, they've got the derma bond on there that, you know, it makes so where it won't migrate in the neck because there's not a really uh, good place for it to sit and be able to, I guess, uh, solidify it in there. Uh, people implants don't have that coating at all. That way, it's it, the body just reacts to it and in, encapsulates it with basically like fatty tissue. So it's like a cyst for the most part because it's natural that your body will coat most any foreign body that gets in you and then um, creates a, a cyst around it. But to remove it, you would be basically just press up to reveal it that much better if it's this one here. Make a small incision and your body uses forceps to pull it out. It'll come out looking like a baby octopus. You'll have a little bit of a gap there, but there's a gap you can throw something else in. And that's a great uh, question because, the, you know, uh, up until recently, there was only two kinds of chips that I would carry around. This conference, I'm like, okay, I've got seven different implants. What do you want? And including one of them that I'm really still learning about because Desi Fire chip, it's all I know, it's NFC and... Kind of like my fair, but not like my fair, and I don't know much about it myself yet. So I've got something to do my own uh, research on. And uh, so, unfortunately, with all the new stuff, including uh, the the new glass and encapsulated magnet that I want, that I've wanted for a while, I kind of want to switch out all the chips in my hand. But that just becomes that much more fun. It's like, okay, one, you got to find person one to do it. Two you got to trust them to do it. And three, it's like now you got to actually take the time to do it and then give yourself time to recover. So I've been tempted again throughout the day of, so do you want to do it now? I'm like, i got to give a talk in a little bit. I don't want to go in there half hopped up on endorphins from pain and be like, so even though I sound like I'm drunk and I'm swaying, what have you, no, I'm just enjoying the pain endorphins from, then this is what I did just a few minutes ago. But thankfully, uh, people kept coming by, so it, it kept us busy enough to not consider that and thinking, yeah, after the talk would be so much better. And especially since uh, you know, I'm a bit of a wuss, it would be better if people weren't around to be like, why are you sweating? Why are you, why are you bright red? Why do you look like you're about to stroke out, dude? It's like, because he's, he's cutting on me. I don't want it. I don't, I don't like it. He's touching me. Stop touching me. That way, you know, we can just go in a quiet room, nobody else around. And I could be the biggest wuss I can, I need to be and just get it done and be like, new toys, new toys. 
Can I make him go play? Especially magnets, man. Come on. Up until recently, magnets, uh, um, until recently, somebody says they had magnets that lasted longer than two years. I'm jealous because uh, nobody's nobody's coatings, including mine, until um, this glass that just came out had a chance in hell of lasting more than two years. But you know, Cassock's one that's you know giant special coating, special sauce, which I don't want to talk about, even though I want to talk about it. Self control is hard. But uh, yeah, his he's been working on it for three years now. And they're still going strong. The first edition of it, six months, not good. Didn't have a lot of hope. But now we're going on about two years on the first ones that came out good. Uh, that giant freaking thing that's been out and in for about a year and a half. So that's, that's what I'm hoping will be a good test case over all these. Because if something that big, that fragile, will keep going and, you know, it's powerful enough to where I'm afraid that she might get an Uber and then get drugged by the Uber because it, she can be attached to a car by that magnet and possibly hang by it, uh, and which also scares me because, uh, you know, uh, give you an example where we were working at at Body Hacks. Um, I was doing implants on a steel table, and it was just basically a steel plate that was uh, welded in, and she was sitting there playing with it at one point when we were just hanging out during lunch and bored and, you know, pulling the skin, what have you. It creeped me out just seeing it stretch because, you know, you know, I couldn't, one, why do you play with something so big, absent mindedly and two, it was stretching about an inch. At first it was half an inch, then it started being an inch, and I'm just like, please stop. I can't look in your direction and I'm trying to have a conversation. It's like, stop. Stop playing with it. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't even thinking about it. And started playing with these uh, big, like, uh, fake coins, tossing them, seeing how many she could stack before they fall off. I'm just like, God. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> but it's cool. Yes, it's really cool, but please stop. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to, you're playing with an ADD boy, trying to say, hey, this is what I've come up with. This is my problems. Do you know anybody here that might fix it? And just stop playing with your coins. But, you know, yeah, I can keep rambling about the different projects going, but I don't know. Better thing is just say, uh, to answer your question, um, one, if you get, if you get set on implants that you want, they'll last as long as you. But just like anything foreign in your body, you can always replace it. That's a great thing about it. We might be, you could call us biological Legos at that point. Because if you know, something new and fun and shiny comes along, yeah, you can pull it out. But depending on placement, that's the biggest part. Like I'll give you an example, like the web here. That's a pretty standard place to put it. But I also have implants here. That's harder. I, can, I would not trust uh, just anybody to pull it out. I'm, even though, yeah, I can tell you exactly where this one is, but I can't tell you where this one is. I don't know where it is. I can scan it, but I can't feel it at all. So that's scary. that means it's time to get an x-ray this way and this way to, and to try and be able to find out exactly how deep it is and whereabouts it is before we start cutting. And then let a GP do it, general practitioner. Instead of a buddy with a scalpel and uh, much better uh, grit than me. Because I'm trained to take things out and sew things up, not put it put it in. Definitely I'm not about to do it to myself. I know better. I always get help. Don't do it yourself. Especially putting it in. Uh, putting it in while trying to teach a friend, while trying to make videos to instruct other people to do it, you're inviting Murphy's Law to make your life a living hell at that moment. And take it from one that knows, that has tried, don't do it. <laughs> one, film only when you have to, take pictures only when you have to, because we all know about live demos, right? Yeah. And the demo gods are evil, vindictive, little whatever. 
it happens in this this too. All right. Anything else, guys? Otherwise, uh, come by and see me if you want to know more, or if you have any advice on how not.